thank you so much um, uh, for the introduction. Thank you, thank you so much for, uh, for having me. Uh, this whole topic, as we can see in, in the, the few previous talks, is so um, negative and also so depressing in the sense that sometimes I think maybe the best thing we can do is have a pop crawl uh, and talk about the downfall of democracy. And uh, That's um, tomorrow. Yeah, that's tomorrow. <laughs> I've seen it in the program. But um, what I'd like to talk about today is um, a very specific aspect is right-wing populism and um, also I'd like to talk about the consequences that right-wing populism can have for social co cohesion in a society. And I take examples from um, Austria and the, or the, from the Austrian right-wing populist uh, party, the FPÖ. Um, so one thing that is very important when it comes to right-wing populism is the, uh, the, the typical argument that populists use is that the good and the on, uh, honest are juxtaposed uh, against uh, the evil them, the malicious them, and those can be the elites, of course, uh, but also in the European contract, uh, context, uh, immigrants, foreigners, Muslims. And uh, to understand the, the rise of populism in Europe, I think it's key to look at the current refugee crisis. The rise of populist parties would never have been as, as stable or big in many European countries without the refugee crisis, without the giving uh, populists the possibility to appeal to emotions, which is a very direct uh, way to uh, get electoral uh, um, um, uh, um, success. And uh, a key, I think, a key factor for explaining the success of populist parties. Um, in addition to that, and Frank uh, um, just mentioned it, the ability of populist uh, parties and populist leaders to circumvent the news media by using social media, which allows them to directly communicate to their followers, uh, and also trying to fuel in, uh, those emotions uh, using strongly emotional um, uh, appeals. And, um, uh, also by means, uh, finally, by means of political advertising, which is a bit different in uh, Austria compared to, um, the, to, to the US and many other countries, because populists can use um, public poster ads, and those public poster ads are basically displayed everywhere. You almost reach 100% of the public with those poster ads. Uh, so in addition to social media with your poster ads that um, are displayed basically everywhere in the, in the city or in, in, in any place, um, you, you reach so many followers and you can do that without any journalistic um, in, uh, intervention. I think this has um, um, important consequences in terms of polarization, misinformation, uh, and the corrosion of social co uh, cohesion as we have just learned. What I'd like to do today is very briefly is to ask three questions. First of all, um, are the followers of right-wing populist parties on social media kind of stuck in a populist spiral? So what does it do with the, the, what are the consequences of following right-wing populist parties and who follows right-wing populist parties on Facebook? Uh, and if there is a populist spiral, that means that those, those, those folks are kind of trapped in, in uh, those ideas and, and it makes it even more extreme uh, toward uh, populist ideas. Um, what is the role of the mass media? Can the mass media, which is still very important, it's a big difference to the, to the US, elevate such uh, effects. We should not forget that we have a public service broadcasting system. The evening news in Austria reaches almost 50% of the public. Uh, in election times, it's even more. So uh, you reach basically most of the people that are interested in, in politics are reached by public per service broadcast broadcasting television news. And uh, so one could argue, well, this is not, you know, the problem is probably not too big because there still is public service broadcasting media reaching out to the public where you can have a balance and and uh, uh, balanced information repertoire for everybody. And finally, uh, I'd like to go one step further and not only look at, uh, at populist followers, but also at those who are usually scapegoated, that those who are attacked by populists that are uh, foreigners or Muslims or refugees themselves. And I'd like to give um, a short outlook of studies we have done with those um, um, uh, people, how they perceive, uh, how they feel if they see uh, populist messages directly uh, communicating ag against them as a social group. So first of all, um, very, very simply, what we did in 2017, there were elections, national elections in Germany and Austria. We, we uh, simply uh, uh, did a very easy dictionary-based approach, looked at uh, anti-elitist and, and anti-immigrant anti references in political parties, and lead candidate Facebook posts in Austria and Germany. And what you basically see here is that um, uh, the public Populist right-wing parties in both countries highly use anti-immigrant references compared to all other parties, which are roughly comparable in both countries. 
And so they really stand out and around 70% of all Facebook posts are anti-immigrant uh, posts and this explains their big uh, success. And in Austria, where the Conservative Party also was more likely <coughs> to use such anti-immigrant posts, um, this was also by analysts uh, taken as one explanation for their elect electoral uh, success in the last um, uh, election. So you clearly see that this topic uh, is when, when you look at not only the style of how they communicate, but you look at what they communicate, you clearly see that it's uh, uh, the topic of anti-immigrant, not shown, and anti-elite um, uh, arguments um, uh, in those uh, social media posts. When we look at the consequences, we did also during election time in Austria, we did a simple, very simple two-way panel study, uh, and this is a, a, a simplified uh, graph here. Um, we simply looked at who is basically following right-wing populist actors, and um, uh, um, what are the consequences of following right-wing populist actors. And you see, of course, not very surprisingly, that those who have anti-immigrant attitudes are more likely to follow right-wing populist actors, but also, more interestingly, that in the two-way panel study, if you follow right-wing pop populist um, um, actors on uh, social media, uh, there's a um, correlation or there's a, a cross-leg effect on anti-immigrant attitudes um, on panel wave two. Uh, that means one could say that this is suggestive of a kind of spiraling process. Once you are trapped in a, a populist communication arena, it will make you more extreme, will, you make, will make you more pop populist in the sense and will um, strengthen your anti-immigrant uh, attitudes. Um, we also looked at, um, in several experimental studies, we looked at the effects of um, uh, right-wing populist ads. And those are ads which are used in social media. We changed them a bit for the purposes of our studies. So for instance, here you have, there were news accounts of, um, um, there were, uh, um, um, uh, there's always news stories about uh, uh, rape crimes by uh, uh, asylum seekers, by Muslims, by foreigners. And of course, these um, 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 news are heavily shared by populist parties and spread uh, on social media. Uh, and uh, there are also campaigns by the, um, the Austrian right-wing populist party where it says, hands off, hands off our women. They are not kind of, um, uh, our, our, it's a typically traditional Austrian dress. Um, uh, so hands off our, our women, and it does also say in, in uh, Arabic, we are not victims of Muslim men. That's what this, this is what this ad says. You can find it on, uh, on social media. And another one uh, basically says, okay, we have to stand together against the Islamization of, of Europe. It's a typical, uh, a typical form of comic, uh, typical argument that is used by right-wing populist parties, that Europe is basically being overrun by um, foreigners, especially by Muslims, uh, and in the context of the, Euro the, the current refugee uh, a crisis, this gave uh, populists a very powerful t tool to be successful in, in, on the electoral booth. We did a couple of studies with, do uh, with those um, ads, experimental studies, where we looked what are the consequences when you're exposed to such, uh, to such um, um, uh, posters or to such political ads. And not surprisingly, we find uh, many studies, but also this one, a more recent one, uh, that when you are exposed, is a quota-based sample of the Austrian public, when you are exposed to uh, such um, political ads, it um, will lead to more negative implicit attitudes toward Muslims or toward foreigners. Basically, implicit attitudes are your negative gut feelings toward uh, the out group, and also to more, to more negative explicit, uh, ex explicit negative attitudes toward Muslims. And finally, it will also boost your uh, voting uh, intention for right-wing populists Party. So this is a very powerful element, um, uh, I would argue, to uh, explain the success of those parties uh, in Austria, but also in the neighboring uh, countries. One could say, okay, this is political advertising, this is social media, what about the role of the classical mass media? Can the classical traditional mass, mass media elevate such effects? And now it's getting really interesting, I'll show you just one example of one recent study we, uh, we did, where we looked at when the, the, the refugee crisis started, and studies Content analytical studies in Germany, at least, suggest that the the way the refugees were covered by the traditional mass, mass media was rather positive. There were positive examples. There was a positive spin in those uh, in those stories. And now one could look at okay, what are the effects of um, being exposed to such positive information about uh, refugees um, uh, um, um, on your own uh, attitudes? And what you see is is basically. 
uh, that uh, the positive media portrayals of mus Muslims actually increase negative attitudes when you are negative. So when you are, when you are uh, anti-Muslims or anti-refugees to, to start with, and then you are exposed to more positive uh, images uh, depicting refugees in a positive light, you even end up with more negative uh, attitudes toward Muslims and immigrants. So it's a kind of backlash effect, speaking to a highly polarized topic. Um, and um, also, of course, um, this Im the, the information um, or the po positive news stories by um, um, uh, by traditional <coughs> mass media are often used also by populists in their own com communication forms on social media when there's a mistake, for instance, or something that is not quite correct. They, of course, immediately use that information. They look, this is what we all uh, already told you, this is completely wrong, and the news media is biased. This one example they gave uh, uh, is, uh, is actually one example that the whole, everything that you basically learn about refugees um, uh, um, is a lie. Uh, and uh, the more, and the, I think the key to understand this is, the more the uh, populist parties succeed in emotionalizing the public, that means making them effectively uh, engage in this topic, the more likely we will have such findings that even if you have positive news reports about uh, refugees and, and Muslims, uh, they will end up with more negative uh, uh, attitudes. So the mass media, in a highly polarized and emotionalized em environment, cannot really elevate uh, the damage or the harm uh, that is done by um, uh, these, kind of, these kind of campaigns and, uh, and so on. And finally, how does um, such a spiral, if you will, affect the scapegoats themselves? That means Muslims uh, themselves who live in Austria. And we did a couple of studies where we tried, which is not easy, where we uh, tried to uh, um, do experimental research with Muslim po populations. And we exposed them to those, to those ads and also to newspaper articles about the whole topic, about the refugee crisis, and so on. And we see how do they react uh, when they see uh, these kind of things. Um, why is this important? This is important because in the context of political advertising, it is not, that it is not um, um, correct that the, um, pop, pop, the, that the populace stay among themselves because the poster ads are basically visibly everywhere. If you are an immigrant or a foreigner, you see it. You see what they are talking about. It's in German, of course, but if you have a basic understanding of the language, you see that you are actually the object um, of a campaign and this campaign is actually targeting you and scapegoating uh, you. And the question for a society is, of course, what does it do uh, with uh, the minority group if they uh, perceive such campaigns? And what we did is a couple of studies. I only show uh, one experimental study uh, where we saw that when um, Muslim, young Muslims are exposed to such ads, and they are because they are displayed in public, uh, it leads them they feel more discriminated by the majority society, so they feel discriminated against, and this also uh, <coughs> reduces their national identification, so they, they disidentify with the majority society. That means they feel less Austrian if they see this. And this, of course, could lead to a dangerous spiral in the sense that um, populist parties um, clearly say, look, those foreigners, those Muslims are different. They have a different culture. They have different values. They overrun us, uh, and we should... Uh, close the borders and, and, uh, and they will never integrate. They will never be Austrians. They will never integrate. And then um, the, uh, those kind of campaigns work. The, uh, a part of the public is getting emotionalized and um, reacts with resentments, negative implicit attitudes, that means negative gut feelings toward those groups, which actually means they become less likely to uh, engage uh, to are in a discussion with those groups or to be uh, approached all, uh, those minority groups and the minority groups themselves feel oh well okay apparently uh, I'm not wanted and uh, I'm discriminated against in this country so I go back to my own community and stay in my community which kind of could lead to a spiraling process in which both parts increasingly we don't have data on that but um, one could make this argument increasingly are torn apart from uh, each other and move away from uh, each other. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to have uh, Jörg and uh, uh, all of our panelists return to the front. That would be great. Uh, including Ji Yoon. Come on. Pull up one more chair. Please take a seat. <coughs> Please. 
Thank you.